What's up, guys and girls, ladies and gents? Welcome to another episode of the Leadership Loading Podcast. Today, we're going live. As you can see, we're live today. We're doing this off the cuff. It's been a while since we had an episode, so I just wanted to get back into it here and talk about something that uh, I just thought was kind of funny. And it's going to be leadership lessons from Deadpool. Uh, we got Deadpool number three coming out in a couple months. So I want to talk about some unconventional leadership lessons from Deadpool and um, how we can apply those as leaders in our life. So uh, if you don't know, Deadpool is a superhero film that was released in 2016. The, the first one was released and um, it was directed by Tim Miller and it stars Ryan Reynolds, as you may know. And it um, was probably, I think it was one of the first superhero films that had R ratings uh, just because it had a lot of violence and profanity and crude humor as far as uh, Ryan Reynolds' character in the show. Um, Deadpool starts off the show, or the movie, sorry, as a real-life uh, person called Wade Wilson. He's a former Special Forces operative turned mercenary, and uh, um, he becomes diagnosed with terminal cancer. So he's looking for treatments and uh, he finds this one that may cure him. Uh, but instead it's um, leaves him with healing powers, disfigured skin. And of course he wants to get back at the people that did this to him. So um, in the show though, he's, he knows he's a comic book character. And so they call this, uh, this technique he uses breaking the fourth wall. So he'll actually look at the camera and make comments to the audience, uh, breaking that fourth wall, uh, especially when he's making funny jokes or, or, or puns to the, the audience there. Um, as I said, it kind of takes, uh, the movie goes through Wade Wilson's transformation into Deadpool and he's going against the, the bad guys uh, that turned him into Deadpool. And, um, he's also having some troubles with his relationship with his uh, girlfriend at the time, Vanessa, uh, which then he, you know, works throughout his the movie to get back to her, and and of course she loves him anyway, even though he's disfigured and and uh, now is a superhero. But it kind of goes into the unique aspects of leadership and how we um, can be the anti-hero, like Deadpool is. So uh, unlike typical morality of regular superheroes, Deadpool has a gray area. Uh, he does the right thing, but often in the wrong way. And uh, he often is, uh, you know, using his self-interest to get ahead in things. But uh, we'll talk about a little bit about that and how that can uh, impact others. So um, I believe Deadpool is one of the most successful superhero films other than the Marvel franchises, uh, you know, the Avengers movies, um, which is why they made a sequel. Uh, and then now the third one is coming out uh, this year, like I said. So. As we look at this, you can see that there's various character traits in Deadpool uh, that can be used for leadership. And, and he is um, an effective leader, especially in the second movie where he actually has a little team that he leads. And and I may do another episode on just that, you know, Deadpool tool, Deadpool 2, um, but why he doesn't fit your, tr your traditional mold. Um, we can talk about some things that he does have. So uh, the one good thing is uh, he does have authenticity. Uh, like, like I said, he breaks the fourth wall and he very much embraces his identity and, and makes fun of himself as far as his, as his, um, disfigured skin and, and the things that he has wrong with him after his mutation. Um, and he just takes it all in and, and, and kind of makes fun of it. Uh, so that's why, you know, as leaders, we need to have authenticity. We need to know our flaws and we have to embrace them and, and know what we need to do to compensate for them. So uh, that will allow our followers to rally behind us more, and especially if we are aware of our flaws and that we're, um, you know, out there and we put them out on the table and the followers can actually help us, you know, get ahead of that and, you know, maybe fill those gaps in as we need. Um, he also has resilience and determination. So, yeah, despite several physical challenges, like I said, um, he has a lot of resilience. Uh, if, if you've watched the movie, he suffers several broken bones and, and things happen to him. Uh, he gets his arm cut off at one part of the movie and uh, he just regrows it back, of course, because his superhero abilities, but uh, he never stops. He just, you know, his bones break and he'll reset them 
and then he'll push through the pain and setbacks. And that can teach us as leaders, you know, that we can push through and persevere as we go forward uh, as leaders in, in our community and, you know, really inspire us to uh, pursue our goals relentlessly and, and just keep moving on through the determination. So uh, his next feature or his next uh, leadership trait is creative problem solving. So uh, his approach to problem solving is unconventional. Uh, he often finds himself creative and unauthorized, unorthodox blah, blah, solutions that others might not consider. Um, like I said, in one part, he's handcuffed to another person and he cuts his hand off so he can get out of the handcuffs. And, and then, of course, he grows his hand back later. Uh, and then there's other parts where he's, you know, in battles and he's fighting people and and using different techniques to uh, ricochet his bullets or or shoot three people with one time. Uh, like I said, you have to watch the movie to see all the, the different problem solving approaches he has when he's running low on ammo. Um, but this highlights the importance of flexibility and creativity as leaders because uh, we can encourage creative thinking and this can lead to solutions. You know, we can get with our team and say, hey, we're having a problem with this. Anyone ever dealt with this before? Maybe at another employer or maybe in your, you know, as they're out on the field, maybe they have worked on something and they just haven't brought that back to the whole the whole group yet. And we can you know, push that out and educate the whole team. Another thing uh, Deadpool has is humor, humor as a tool. This is probably my most uh, weak point is humor. I'm not a, a very uh, joking person, especially in, in the workplace. I, you know, I'll take a joke and I'll, I'll tell a joke, but I'm not one of them that can, be, I'm not very one of those people that can do quick witted jokes or make funny jokes really quick, unless it's a dad joke with my daughter. But uh, yeah, uh, humor, that's one of his uh, most notable traits is his sense of humor and his, his quick wit, uh, especially when the, the bad guys are doing something. But um, he uses this, he uses it as a coping mechanism, uh, and it, but it also helps diffuse the tension between um, him and his counterparts, especially the people on his team. Uh, if you if you watch in the movie, he's uh, I think it's in the second one. He has a, a little team, and there's a, a female character, and uh, he always does these little jokes, and she kind of rolls her eyes because you know it's they're in a serious situation, they're about to fight, and he's just making jokes, so. Um, but yeah, leaders can learn from this by using humor appropriately uh, to create a positive ap atmosphere. So yeah, if you're a leader that has this trend or this trait to make jokes and, and things like that, um, you know, it's going to help your team because, uh, you know, me coming from the military, uh, we, we joke all the time. We had nicknames, you know, goofy nicknames for each other. And we had, we joke about, you know, things uh, or we do use pop culture references uh, to just kind of diffuse the tension or, or, you know, just kind of take the edge off of something that's going on. So uh, leaders can use this to encourage com camaraderie and, and make yourself more approachable. Uh, the next trait is embracing, uh, embracing diversity and strength. So yeah, Deadpool, he forms a team and it has a diverse uh, team, like I said earlier, uh, but they have all different abilities and personalities. Uh, he's got a female character. She can run fast and kind of ram people. Uh, there's another character named Colossus. He's a big metal guy, and so he's strong and can and throw things. And um, and then the second one, he actually has a bigger team that has all, a bunch of different goofy superhero powers. Um, won't ruin it for you, but it doesn't turn out the way he wants to. Uh, but anyway, as the leader, he recognizes the, util the unique strength of each one of his people, and he puts that to work. Um, there's one example where he uses uh, the girl she helps him boost up, you know, to get to a different level of this uh, fighting area. And then um, they use some of their other powers to uh, defeat the bad guys, basically. Uh, but effective leaders can use this and, you know, obviously balance out their team. This is what we call uh, situational leadership, where you uh, address your leadership style to the people on your team, because you know, not everyone's the same and not everyone takes the same leadership skills uh, the same way. So you have to adjust your leadership style. So yeah, bringing this diverse team together can help you enhance the problem solving abilities uh, as you move forward in your teams. Uh, the next one is unconventional talent recognition. So yeah, Deadpool himself is the epitome of unconventional talent. He is, like I said, he's not the typical superhero. He's a, they call him the anti-hero, um, but he has abilities and methods that make him stand out against other superheroes. He He's very skilled with his katana blades, his uh, swords, 
Uh, he, he always carries two pistols with him or usually carries two pistols. And um, he's very skilled with all that. And then uh, basically this reminds us that as leaders, we have people on our teams that have different skill sets and unconventional skill sets. And we should be able to recognize that and nurture that to make sure that they can use those skills uh, within the department. Um, <clears throat> this could be anything from if you're making a, a logo for your department, maybe one of your guys, even if you're not a uh, a firm or, or a department that draws things, maybe you have an artist on your team, help them, you know, let them draw the logo for the department. Maybe it'll get picked up. We had a, um, a department, a project where we, we wanted to do a mural for our department. And so we let all the, all the people that wanted to participate, uh, you know, help sketch it out and paint it. And uh, it became a, a big team building exercise. So uh, just different things like that, that we can use as leaders to build our teams up. Uh, the next one is adaptability. So Deadpool's flexibility allows him to adapt to rapidly changing situations. Uh, this is a critical trait for any leader because, um, you know, as we pivot and we adjust to different strategies, uh, the new challenges can help us, um, you know, navigate those obstacles better and ensure the long, long term success. So, yeah, you know, Deadpool is flexible there. As I mentioned earlier at, at the beginning of the first movie, he's only has two magazines because he forgot his backpack. And uh, so he's trying to uh, neutralize all the bad guys with only 14 rounds. And I think there's 14 or 15 bad guys. So he's got to use multiple bullets sometimes because he misses a few. Um, but yeah, the same thing with his swords and other things. But, um, you know, as we use our adaptability to be leaders, we can uh, ensure we're long-term successful. Uh, vision and focus. So Deadpool, uh, obviously he's chaotic. Uh, the whole movie is just nonstop uh, chaos, you know, different things happen with Deadpool, uh, but he's driven by his clear personal goals and his singular focus on the mission. Um, yeah, there are some personal vendettas he has against the people that he's fighting against, uh, but uh, we have to set clear goals as leaders and help our team achieve those goals with the purpose so once again the movie uh, deadpool he obviously wants to get back at the guys that made him a made him a, a hero basically uh, because they lied to him about the treatments and that sort of thing but uh, as he's going through this he also does help a few people um there's uh some other bad guys that are in there and they uh you know he goes after them uh, to help the other the innocent people um so yeah in the end, Deadpool, you know, he, he's a he's a character and he's not a real person, but um, his leadership style does help us as leaders uh, mark the ability to be authentic um, and resilient and create uh, effective solutions for problems. So um, these lessons can help us, you know, inspire our teams and move forward uh, with our formality and professionalism and um, just think outside the box when we're looking at traditional leadership attributes. So um, the key takeaways are that, you know, the contrast between his leadership styles underscore the diversity in leadership styles. So obviously uh, he's not a normal person, but he's an effective leader in his show uh, in the movie. Um, but, you know, as we use unconventional methods or suggest adaptability and authenticity for our leadership styles, we have to have a clear focus. And these are, things that we can use as traditional attributes to make sure that we're leading ahead. So, all right. So let me know what you thought about this. It's a short live, but uh, let me know what you thought about this little bit different take on leadership loading podcast. Uh, you know, we normally do interview type episodes, uh, but we're kind of uh, bending the mold a little bit and, and going from there. So we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.